Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff. This is Jeff Reads. And today I'm going to be doing a book tag called The Reading Evolution or The Reader's Evolution Book Tag, which is a terrific tag. Um, I saw it. I saw some other a bunch of booktubers doing it, but I think the person who originated it um, is called uh, Spread Book Joy. And I'm going to link it down below. Um, but if you just type in uh, Reader Evolution Book Tag, you're going to, I think, all the booktubers are doing it. All the booktubers. Um, so I thought it was a really cool tag and I haven't been posting as much because I've been a little busy. So I thought I want to keep my hat in the ring and I would do this book tag. So um, without further to do, here is the Reader's Evolution book tag. So <clears throat> there are five questions, actually four questions and the fifth one they want you to tag somebody. Uh, the first question is how has your taste changed as a reader over the years? So I basically started reading when I was, you know, probably Eight, between eight and ten, uh, you know, seriously, um, and started with uh, young adult and children's books. Um, and my taste in those books, so I read all the Three Investigators books, all the Black Stallion series, Encyclopedia Brown, um, Hardy Boys, um, like mad. So boys adventure fiction, as it were, uh, was kind of my first taste as a kid. Um, as a teenager, I discovered the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and that was that kicked off a whole uh, left turn into fantasy uh, and science fiction. Um, I think 2001 and Lord of the Rings were two big turning points for me. Those are the two big entry points into each genre. So as a teenager, um, from Lord of the Rings, I read Conan, uh, all the Lancer Ace Conans, because that's kind of, there was very little Howard being published in your average kind of suburban bookstore at that point. So the Lancer Ace Conans and the Tor Conans too, because the Schwarzenegger movie had come out in 82. Um, so the Tor books, uh, Jordan was publishing at the time. So I was a big Conan fan and big Lord of the Rings fan. Um, and just read, you know, sci-fi and fantasy throughout uh, my teen years, pretty much. Um, and then into my early 20s, I discovered the thriller. I think it was weird. Like when I was a teenager, I saw thriller books on the shelf. But um, I'm like, they're kind of, there was like an adultness about them, I think, that I just was like, I don't know, people in bars shooting each other, going on the run. It, it did, like, as a teenager, I was more like, you know, rockets and astronauts and swords and sorcery. There was something, there was a divide there. Um, and then I picked up a Robert Ludlum novel uh, in my very early 20s, and I was a huge Ludlum fan. Oh my God. Uh, I don't remember, I think The Battery Circle was the first one I read, and I was hooked. So I burned through Ludlum. Um, I read Clive Cussler at that point, uh, Tom Clancy and Michael Crichton. Like I went through the modern thrillers like crazy. Uh, and this was, you know, so this was the, the mid late eighties, uh, early nineties. So uh, from there, uh, then in my kind of late twenties, early thirties. Um, so at that point I was still, I was reading thrillers and then I was still dipping back into fantasy because I discovered the Wheel of Time in 1991, I think. Um, so that kind of, I was adding fantasy back and still at yeah, sci-fi and my tastes were still pretty much genre. Uh, and then I moved back to New York when I was in my late twenties and something about being back in New York and, you know, moving to Manhattan for the first time, I was like, all right, it's literature time. So I got into a heavy duty literature phase in my uh, late twenties throughout my mid thirties. Um, Moby Dick, War and Peace, like I went after the classics. Um, I was reading contemporary literature, like just, it was literature. Um, and genre kind of went by the wayside a little bit. I would still jump in and, and do a sci-fi book every now and again. Like I had read Foundation as a teenager, and so I would revisit Foundation every five, six years. I'd revisit Lord, Lord of the Rings. So there was genre in there, but literature was my, my main thing. Once I kind of got a taste for it, um, I was like, oh my God, there's a whole new, you know, this is a whole new thing. Um, so heavy lit uh, through like my late 30s and in my 40s, I kind of really got, I think I got heavily into film in my late 30s through my 40s. I had um, a podcast called Sci-Fi on Screen, which is no longer available. Um, but for a while I was a film nut. So I was in New York City, I would go to second run houses to see foreign films. I was renting all kinds of um, things from, from Tower Records. I was renting TV and film. So I was a film nut for like heavy, heavy for like 15 years. And books would come and go. Um, a new Dan Simmons novel would come out, I would try it. You know, some of the authors that I really loved, 
Um, I would try Jordan every, every once in a while, try to get past that fifth book in the Wheel of Time, fail. Uh, so I would nitpick, but um, I wasn't like a reader reader anymore. I was really a movie guy, uh, a movie buff, and I just, you know, I was a movie hound. Um, and, you know, having my own place uh, and having a good TV and a good VCR and then a good DVD player, like, that's kind of what I did for a long time. Um, and then I think the pandemic, definitely, for probably so many of us, right? Um, I really rediscovered reading again during the pandemic. And I thought, God, because I used to read a lot. Um, and there's a frequency of reading is another question. So I'll get to that then. But um, once uh, the pandemic happened, I got back into it. And I got back into it. Uh, then it was everything. Uh, then it was literature, thriller, science fiction, fantasy. It was I wanted to read everything, basically. Um, what I haven't read a lot of is history and nonfiction. Uh, I've done a little bit of essay reading, um, and I'm, I'm kind of, that's expanding a little bit, some travel writing, um, but there's, there's just so much to read. It takes so long to read a book, you know, to read it well and slowly and enjoy it, and there's like eight billion uh, up ahead of you. It's, it's, I think to be alive and to be a voracious reader in 2022 is a nightmare. Like, the amount of printed material that, a, that, a, that an excited uh, interested reader wants to read and you know your lifespan because books take a while to read like good books that are two three hundred pages and the genre books that are heavier um, or big literature books it could take a month um, and it shouldn't take any longer you know I'll, I'll, that's a pet peeve I'll get to that later but anyway so I definitely at this point in my in my early 50s now almost mid 50s um, I can't read certain things anymore that I used to be able to read. So I, I can't read a lot of sci-fi that was written in the 40s and 50s. This, I think the certain prose doesn't make it anymore for me. Like I used to read, I read every Robert Ludlum novel, devoured it. And when I was younger, there wasn't much of a sense of like, oh, okay, here's Robert Ludlum. And, um, Cause I hadn't read any literature. I didn't know what, I didn't have a sense of prose at all. But once I read good literature and once I started to you know, really start to say, wow, the, what is it about the sentences in this book that are blowing me away? I almost don't even care what the book's about. The sentences are so great. Once I developed that little taste in my mouth for well-written sentences, and then the variety of writers between Faulkner and Hemingway um, and China Mayville and Tolkien and, uh, you know, whoever else, so many different styles and so many writers command the language in different ways. It's so beautiful. Um, that was really amazing. So I think once that happened and I developed, it's almost like, you know, developing a good taste for wine, you can't drink Chateau Diana from CVS anymore. Like, it's just not going to cut it. So I've tried to go back and read Robert Ludlum and there's Ludlum on my shelf. I'm collecting Ludlum because I was so in love with the books for a long time. I can still read Clancy because he was a clean writer. There are some writers that are, they're clean, crisp prose writers and they're in a certain kind of mid-range where it's nothing special and it's not bad. Um, so it's like, it, it tells the story and you get lost in the book. But I've, I've gone back and tried to read Ludlum now as an adult and he's bad. He's, and I read a lot of King too uh, in my early 20s. I forgot him, Stephen King. A ton of, I read a ton of King and Clancy and Crichton and, um, and Ludlum uh, for a time. And I can't read Ludlum anymore. Uh, he's so over, so overwrought. He uses italics everywhere. <laughs> Things are so like, what's going to happen in italics? And he's too much. So uh, I can't read King anymore. I can read some King, but King is just, I don't know. He's so undisciplined. He's, he's a good writer. I mean, I can't fault the man, but for my personal taste, it's very hard to read him now. Um, so yeah, there's certain writers that haven't made the jump where I just, if the prose is really bad, and I think it's a bummer because I like reading a good thriller, but I think in a weird way, science fiction and modern popular thriller fiction probably has the worst prose writers. I think fantasy, strangely enough, I've, I've, re I've run into less crappy writing in the fantasy genre. I don't understand why. Maybe because everyone kind of tries to ape Tolkien, which gets them writing decent sentences, and so they're not so bad. But man, I mean, in, I just tried reading this book called I Am Pilgrim by Terry Hayes. It's like... Uh, it was like a first draft. Like, did, was there an editor involved here? Did, did you write this in high school? You know, there's a certain kind of prose that's just, and I don't want to say good or bad because that's not a good, because I think art is in the eye of the beholder and, and, and good prose is in the eyes of the reader. But there is a large swath of popular fiction 
that is written in a way that I just, I can't, I can't get through the sentences to be interested enough in the plot. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a bummer because, you know, I mean, Lee Child is kind of like the high bar for me for thriller writers. He's a terrific writer. His prose is kind of like Chandler and Hemingway. Like, it's very good prose. It's very spare and crisp. Um, Elmore Leonard, another writer who I can read to death. Louis L'Amour can read forever. Um, these are writers in the genre who, like, have, they can write. Um, they're really good writers. So, yeah, unfortunately, my tastes have changed for a spell. Uh, and there are just certain types of prose that I cannot read anymore. So it's a bummer, actually, because I would just kind of like to read everything. But um, it's just like drinking sand at some point. I can't do it. So uh, question number two, has your format changed in your reading? And obviously this is aimed at, you know, the big changes in the, the digital world. Um, I was a paperback and hardcover reader for most of my life. Like mass market paperback is kind of like, you know, the backbone of my reading. Because I, uh, you know, I, I work a day job and I have to commute, you know, and I, I don't drive. So I live in the city, New York City. Uh, I take buses and subways and that sort of thing. So, you know, you want to throw something that's not too heavy in your bag. Um, I love a good hardcover, but uh, they're heavy. <laughs> so I think I've been a paper book reader forever. When Kindle came out, um, I got one and I don't like reading anything serious or that I, I like, I can read crap on Kindle. I can blow through some thrillers on Kindle or like some maybe contemporary science fiction or maybe some like, you know, Edgar Rice Burroughs, stuff that's just like pure adventure. Um, that's going to be very light. I can do on a Kindle. Uh, but I can't, anything that's serious fiction or literature, like I, I really like to write in books, even genre books. Um, and genre books I like to collect. If I like a genre book, I want it um, as, as a thing to hold. Uh, but, and there's, there is a different aesthetic experience um, to, you know, pressing the screen and having the pages flip and actually having a page of prose on paper and reading it. I can't really explain it because in some ways it doesn't really make a difference. And I don't, I'm not one for one or the other. Um, I'm trying to remember. Someone recently did uh, a show talking about this, and they were like, it doesn't matter. Um, whether it's digital or print, um, it's like however the story gets to you, however you like the story to get to you, that's great. But I like the story to get to me uh, on a physical object. I really like physical books. So although I have a Kindle, um, and there are times when I will throw some books on a Kindle, it's really kind of throwaway reading for me. Um, and I don't do a lot of it. Question number three, uh, my quantity. Um, what is my quantity of reading? How much do I read uh, uh, over the years? So I think in my teens and 20s and 30s, I always had a book going. Now, I wasn't a voracious reader. I've never been a voracious reader. I, I'm a very slow reader. I take my time. Um, I, I'll rip, like, I ripped through the Jack Reacher series, I think. That was one of the few voracious moments. Um, I burned through Jack Reacher, like 20 books in like a month. It was like crazy, but those books you can burn through. So yeah, so I always had a book uh, pretty much going pretty regularly until I hit my movie phase, late 30s through my 40s when I was really a movie guy. There would be months, um, maybe four, six months, no book. Um, and then something might pop into my head or I would get something and I would read it. But there wasn't any kind of program in my head. In, in my 20s, you know, genre books are just something I did when I was much younger, just because I just, it was my pastime. I just always had a book going. And then when I got into literature, it was like, all right, I'm on a mission. I want to read everything, blah, 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 blah. And then at some point that I fell off and now like movies took over and I was like, I want to watch every movie ever made and educate myself in the, you know, in cinema. Um, and then that was through my forties. And then I think, again, the pandemic came and it I was back. And even the year before the pandemic, I think, uh, my 50s came on me and I kind of been, there was like a bell curve for movies with me and I was kind of getting, I was not as excited about new movies that were coming out. I had seen a ton of classics. Um, still, I have so much to see. Like uh, my, my movie, um, Dark Spots are huge. Um, but for me, I had seen everything I kind of wanted to see uh, and I wasn't really interested in new independent films that were coming out. There was something about them that just wasn't, I wasn't interested in anymore. And I used to go out by myself in the city to see like the latest indie films that came out. Um, and then it was no longer happening. And so there was a little bit of a fallow period. And then I picked up books again and I was off. And then when the pandemic came, it was like, wow, okay, this is, you know, when I get to the end of my life, I kind of want to have read a certain chunk of things that I'm picking out now that I would like to read. 
Um, so yeah, so I, at this point now, I think I'm going to be a dedicated reader, unless my life takes a really interesting turn, and I, I literally have no time to read, which I don't see that happening. Um, I'll be a dedicated reader <clears throat> um, going forward. So question four, uh, has BookTube impacted your reading? It has, actually, uh, in, a, in a great ways, um, in a couple of ways. So the first way, I didn't know a lot of people who read as much as I did. I didn't know a lot of book nerds. I mean, I think so many people who do BookTube channels were kind of like these little islands of readers. So when I stumbled upon BookTube, man, that was the best, the best thing ever. I mean, BookTube is the best. It's, it's such a wonderful example of how um, modern media can be uh, community forming. I mean, what a wonderful community of booktubers we all are. We just love to read, and most of us are pretty decent people. You know, most of the comments are, are enthusiastic. We care we're too much, probably. You know, we're all frustrated that we don't read enough. But, so it did two things. Number one, um, I have so many d d different booktubers on my channel, and I'm subscribing to all different people who are in different countries, and different genders and different ages. And they were reading all kinds of different books. So now I'm getting exposed to books that I've never heard of before. Um, I don't think I really have a, a place where I would go for new books. I think when I uh, was interested to start reading again, I would just go online and kind of search around. But I never really had a, a place where there were like a radio or something where they were, they were piling into my head. But that's one wonderful thing about BookTube is almost like you just hear about all different kinds of books. Um, you know, some you're not interested in, a lot of them you are. You're like, wow, I never, and people are enthusiastic and talking about them. Nothing better. So the, the um, open my eyes to just the wide range of books and authors, and I've discovered a bunch of authors out there, number one. So that was great. Number two, it re-excites me every single day when I open up uh, YouTube and I get to see that little thing next to the subscription. And I know like seven or eight people just posted new videos. It's like, it continually re-inspires me Yo, I gotta do some, gotta do my reading today. So like, it's a constant prod to read. Um, but this is the bad thing. So I think at first I was like, oh my God, I gotta read a thousand books. How do you read faster? I gotta read more and more. People post every day on BookTube. I don't know how some of you BookTubers do it where you be posting daily videos. I mean, it's not a book review every day. Obviously there's book tags and retrospectives and this, that's what's wonderful about BookTube. It's, you don't have to post, post a book review every day, but you know, the, all the reading um, challenges that people come up with or the reading themes, June on the Range, you know, Victober, Dictember, are hysterical, first of all. But they're cool, you know, but I, I'm kind of awe inspired that people are reading 20, 30 books a month. Um, I'm lucky, I'm 50 a year, 40, 50 books a year is kind of my max. So I think at first I got frustrated and I was like, you know, I just have to quit my job and not speak to anyone for the rest of my life and just dig a hole and just have people keep throwing books in and maybe I'll catch up. And then I stopped. And it was because there was a point when I stopped enjoying what I was reading. And it was more about like, oh, I can't wait to post and I want to post and I want to post. I want to post every week and blah, 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 blah. Um, and I totally turned it around and I said, stop. You know, like I want to read slower. I want to read books uh, much deeper and much richer. I want to take my time. And I started to see some booktubers who were kind of agreeing with me. There's certain booktubers out there who are like all about slow reading. And it's about the process of reading. And, you know, if it takes you a month to finish a 200 page book, 200 page book, because you're luxuriating in the sentences and the prose and anything else that's going on in the book and you're sipping and savoring, that's beautiful. And that's kind of, it's now turned me into a much better reader because I've said, okay, I'm not criminally reading 100 books in two months. Like, I can't. I obviously can't do that. And I don't want to do that. I don't know that I'll remember any of them when I'm done. Um, God bless him. He's amazing. So it's turned me into a much more methodical reader. I just finished reading uh, The Eye of the World, uh, and I want to read the wheel, finish The Wheel of Time. I've been trying to finish it for years. Um, and I realized my key to reading Jordan is to read Jordan slower. Uh, and I enjoyed the hell out of the book by taking my time and pausing when I was, you know, so it's really, in a sense, being first inspired to chase after all these crazy readers who are like computers. Then I slowed down and now I'm really slow. Now I really take my time. And instead, I'll have a couple of books going. I'll, I'll be slowly in one book, I'll pause, I'll maybe read another chapter of another couple of books, slowly pause, back to the other book. And I'm finding I'm settling into a nice 
kind of uh, organic reading habit where I'm remembering things. Um, and BookTube definitely has helped in that way too, where because I want to, I don't book, I don't do a BookTube review on everything I read because if there's nothing memorable, if I don't have anything interesting to say about the book, if I finish something, I just read uh, Louis L'Amour, um, I think The Quick and the Dead, no, The Quick and the Dead, A Man Called Noon. And I love Louis L'Amour, but it was kind of, A Man Called Noon was kind of one of his riffs. It was, even for him, it was a little bit of a light affair. And I really had nothing to say about it. It was an enjoyable read, but I wasn't putting together anything fun from the book. And I thought, yeah, I'm not gonna just go online and say, you know, the reviews that I don't, that I fast forward or stop watching are, are, are the reviews that are sort of like, it was a really good book. The characters were good, the plot was great, and it was a good book. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> It's like okay, so if if I'm there, if I'm in this kind of ephemeral place, I won't uh, I won't do it. I won't do a, a booktube video on it. But when I am into a book uh, and I'm excited about it, and I think, oh man, I have lots to talk about. I want to turn this book over. It's exciting. Um, I start taking notes, and if I'm taking notes for the channel, I'm remembering the book because whenever you take notes and then I have to go back and reread my notes. It's, it's stitching the book in my memory more now. So I, the books that I book to, and even if I get, I just go watch like, if I read a book, someone asked me if I read a book and I'm like, not only did I read it, I did a booktube show on it. I can go back and watch it and be like, oh yeah, okay, these are the things that I liked about it. I like that because there are, there are a large chunk of books in my head um, that I know I've read and for the life of me, I can't remember what the hell they were about. Um, and it's kind of weird when someone says, oh, did you read this book? And I say, yeah, I read it. Uh, I remember reading it. I just don't remember anything about it. That's, I don't like that. You know, like I'd like to somehow come up with kind of a way, a mnemonic way to hold on to the, what I liked about a book and maybe a couple of passages here and there. So I write in this little, I have this little moleskin book that as I'm going through a book, I'm writing passages and page numbers and characters and everything I like about it. And I love that process. Um, Cause I'm just, I'm learning and reflecting in that moment. And then I get to put it together in a little show and do a booktube on it. So, um, so yeah, booktube has really, really helped and changed me a lot um, in a lot of ways. So it's, it's the best, I mean, come on. Um, all right, and uh, the last thing here is to tag a bunch of people, but everyone's done this tag before. So if you're watching this channel and you have a booktube channel and you haven't done this, tag you're it. So thanks for watching. See you next time.